Hi everybody, today I'm here with Sammy Brody. She is a student athlete at Roger Williams University. She plays women's soccer and she also does women's track and field. How are you, Sammy? I'm good, how are you? I am wonderful. Thank you again so much for joining me today. And we're gonna be talking about the um, student athlete recruitment process and what your recruitment process was like today. I have a few questions for you. Um, so first of all, um, what were your initial expectations when you considered continuing to play at a collegiate level for either yourself or the schools that you were looking at? My expectation had a lot to do with academically and also athletically. So not only being part of a team that wants to succeed, but also wanting to succeed academically. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really important, especially since I know you started playing at a Division two level, and now I know you're playing at a Division three level at Roger Williams. Um, like, at Division three, it's really important to balance, like, find a place that helps you balance those academics and athletics, because, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, when you're out of D3 school, you're more like, like, you're there to, to learn, and, yeah. Um, uh, what was the communication like between you and the schools that you were interested in? A lot of phone calls, a lot of emails. Um, before the pandemic, it would be a lot of visiting, going to clinics, or just getting tours around the school with the coach. Did the school also send you a lot of letters, like about what the school was all about in general? Sometimes, um, not all the time, depending on the school. It also depended on if you were on their mailing list or not. I know for some of them, I wasn't on the mailing list. But I think that also had to do something a part of when you do the SATs, they find your name and just send out a lot of letters. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely experienced that after, especially doing my PSATs. I got a lot of emails from different colleges. Um, so what was signing day like for you? Like, how did you feel? Did you have any concerns when you signed? Signing day was personally for me a big deal, especially going D2. It like being at Parker, it, there wasn't a big signing day, but I know for a lot of my other friends, signing day at high schools is like a big deal. It's very huge. So signing day was just an important day to recognize that I accomplished a lot and I was going for the next chapter in my life to play at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I know um, we, we both went to the same high school, charter school, and athletics might not have been like the biggest deal at the school. So getting to play at a D2, D2 school after playing at a charter school is a huge deal. Um, was there anything you wish you could have done differently in regards to your recruiting process? Oh yes, 100%. I personally wish I started a lot sooner. So D1 tends to look at kids when they're freshmen in high school, even younger. D2, it's more around the same age, but sometimes sophomores. So I really wish I'd start looking a lot sooner, but looking more academically rather than athletically, because sometimes the schools aren't all what they say they are when sometimes coaches are talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... And uh, what are some of the cha most challenging parts of your recruiting process? Like did coming from a charter school rather than like a public school or a private school make being recruited any more difficult for you? Were there any other parts that were challenging? Definitely the first time around, there weren't many challenges because I played a lot of club soccer and also additional teams on top of that. So that wasn't too big of a deal, but coming from like a charter public school kind of deal, sometimes it made it difficult for coaches to be able to see you at a high school level that's competitive. But for the, third, for the second time around, it was difficult because I couldn't go to campus or really like have a in-person conversation with the coach. Yeah. So I know that was a little challenging. Yeah, and I also know that from coming from a charter school specifically, like there's some academic restrictions, like we didn't have a GPA, um, so that, definitely made things difficult. Um, I definitely experienced the difficulties. I'm not even a student athlete and I was trying to apply for schools as well. So that always made things challenging, but yeah. Um, and I know you transferred schools. You were once at Franklin Pierce and now you're at um, Roger Williams and you're playing, you're playing the two different sports at your school. Um, what was the transfer process like in terms of like your athletics and recruitment? 
The transfer process was very stressful because it was during finals as well. Um, it was different. So I would have a lot of phone calls with coaches and a lot of times I would have to spend hours doing research, but for transferring wise, it actually wasn't horrible. Um, I realized a lot of times coaches want transfers. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. But I also realized when you have to transfer, you have to get a waiver signed saying that you're officially stepping away from the team and you get put onto a website and coaches actually will look you up, like look people up on websites depending on the position they need and reach out to you. So I thought that was really cool. Oh yeah, that is really cool. I didn't know that that was like a process that people do when they transfer. Um, that's definitely really interesting. Um, and uh, what were some in-person recruiting events that you attended? Did you attend like any camps on um, like official, non-official school visits? And how did these visits shift your opinion on where you wanted to attend? So there were a lot of camps. So some were overnight, some were day camps. Additionally to that, if you're very interested in the school and the team, you would actually have like night night shifts or something. I don't know what they're called, but you would basically get given a player on the team. You would follow them throughout their normal school day, attend classes with them, eat lunch with them and the team, and you would stay over for a night or two. And so I went through that process and that was really cool because it helped you experience the campus a little bit better. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And one final question. So obviously the pandemic has changed a lot of things about how college sports are running. A lot of schools aren't even participating in sports right now they're, they're mainly just holding practices so that's definitely all changed the recruiting process as well um what is what are some pieces of advice that you have for students going through the recruiting process right now especially when some high school sports aren't even playing right now it would definitely be to reach out to the coach a lot and also ask for player information i know when i was going through the second process I reached out to a lot of players who would tell me how the school went how like the team actually were and so getting more of a personal here's how the team is really was helpful yeah networking is incredibly important especially like even when it's just recruiting in a normal time period we're not in a pandemic but um in a time period where we can't be in person and we might not be able to compete recruiting networking is incredibly important all right, I think that's all the questions that I have, but thank you so much for joining me.